Hi folks, Matthew Lanigan here with Baywa RE. I still see uh, people signing in, so we'll be back with you in just one or two minutes and we'll get things started. Thanks. Hey folks, Matthew Lanigan here again with Baywa RE. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer here at Baywa. I really appreciate you taking time to be with us and our great partner, Kinetic. Uh, Kinetic's the first and only flush mount racking we've ever used. Uh, we've been using them for over 10 years. Uh, really fantastic product. But a couple of things before we get going. Um, continuing education is, is a big part of what we do here for our staff internally, so we're really appreciative that uh, you're getting educated with us uh, today as well. We will be taking questions. We will answer them at the end. So you'll notice there's a little uh, question box in the bottom right corner. So please put them down there. We will be recording this. It'll come out in the next newsletter, which should be released later this week. It'll also be on our YouTube channel. If you haven't signed up for our YouTube channel yet, we'd really appreciate it. If you did, you can find this uh, presentation as well as all of our previous presentations as well. So without further ado, we'd like to introduce Sidiptu with Kinetic. He's the project engineering specialist. Sidiptu. Oh, you seem to be on mute, Sidiptu. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Great. Can you see my screen? Yes, everything oh, okay. looks great. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Matthew, for that kind introduction. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, Bewa has been a key distributor for Kinetic Solar products for as long as I have been here. And uh, over the years, uh, many of you have closely worked with me and have seen me grown into this industry uh, especially when it comes to questions related to our products. Uh, I'm sure you have dealt with me. So uh, I'm excited to share with you the latest advancements in our uh, k, k rack line of products and discuss how we can continue to bring value to your business. So um, I'm going to uh, uh, stop my camera so that uh, you guys can focus on the presentation. So. So um, earlier this week, uh, I have been in contact with uh, the Association of Professional Engineers and Geoscientists of Saskatchewan to confirm whether this webinar can be eligible for uh, CPD credits. And uh, I'm pleased to inform you that this, uh, this, uh, this training has been approved for one verifiable uh, credit hour towards, your, uh, towards this year's CPD program. Uh, this year, um, all the licensed APEX, APEX members are required to complete at least uh, 12 verifiable uh, uh, CPD credits. Typically, uh, CPD credits that are approved by one uh, Canadian engineering association are recognized by other provincial engineering bodies as well. So if you'd like a certificate of participation, you can reach out to Emma or me after the webinar. So uh, 
here's a little bit about me. Um, so my name is Shuditta Mondol, and I'm a professional engineer with Kinetic Solar Racking and Mounting. Uh, I have been in the uh, I have been with Kinetic Solar for over three years, and during this time, I have been involved in every stage of product development. Uh, recently, our engineering team has expanded into a three-member team, and I have passed on uh, some of my uh, design and marketing responsibilities to Julian and Bojun, um, allowing me to focus on product applications and uh, ensuring compliance with industry standards. Uh, now, um, here is a picture of me, and I would like to draw your attention to the three feet of snow behind me and the thickness of my jacket. So uh, this picture was taken back when I was attending school uh, at the University of Saskatchewan. And I remember being bundled up, uh, you know, uh, and uh, it was minus 60 degrees outside and I would go, I have to walk, I had to walk from the student residence to the university. And, by, uh, and then the, when, when the spring would roll up around, uh, the, the minus 10 degree, uh, would suddenly feel like a summer breeze. That's the power of adaptation. And uh, it's the same principle that drives our innovation in solar solutions at Kinetic Solar. Uh, you know what they say about Saskatchewan? Saskatchewan has the some of the coldest weather in the world, but people are the people are some of the warmest you will ever meet. And moving to Toronto uh, uh, from Saskatchewan, it was a bit of cultural shock for me. So, yeah. So uh, here is the uh, agenda uh, of, of the topics that I will be covering today. Um, I will start with a brief uh, background of Kinetic Solar, our new products and recent, uh, recent improvements. Uh, rafterless mount, uh, steel roof solutions, shared rail systems, um, and an introduction to our system configurator. I will also make sure we leave some time at the end of the presentation uh, so that um, uh, I can answer any questions that you might have. So Kinetic Solar Racking and Mounting is an Ontario-based company with a long history in manufacturing. Our parent company, Alpha Tool and Dye Manufacturing, was founded uh, in 1980 by Adolf Osler, uh, the father of our current owner, Archie. Uh, initially, Alpha Tool and Dye focused on aluminum and window door um, industry. In 2008, Archie took over the company alongside his uh, longtime associate, Henry. Uh, they saw a tremendous opportunity in the emerging solar business uh, with over half a century of combined experience in product development and manufacturing. They shifted their focus to clean energy solutions. In 2009, uh, with the introduction of Ontario Green Energy Act and uh, domestic content requirements, Alpha Tool and I spent six months in research and development to introduce uh, racking and mounting products under the brand name Kinetic Solar. The result, a full product line, quickly recognized uh, for its superior engineering and ease of installation for, from pitch roofs, uh, you know, pitch roof solutions to ground mount solutions. Um, our signature product line, the K-Rack, has become well known for its quality, uh, ease of installation and thought foot features. It remains a benchmark in the industry today. Uh, Canada is the second largest country in the world, and uh, with its diverse uh, you know, landscape, it, uh, the, we have different challenges. Uh, from the bustling cities of Ontario to the remote uh, nor northern communities, each region has its own unique requirements. And at Kinetic, we have made it a priority to reduce the carbon footprint of our country by ensuring that all our KRAC products have engineering stamps for all uh, for all provinces in Canada, no matter what the sales numbers tells us. Uh, so whether um, it's uh, Alberta, Nunavut, Newfoundland, we believe in pushing our country towards a sustainable future. Uh, and many many a times, getting a permit can often be the first roadblock in a project. And um, 
we have taken care of that for you by securing these provincial stamps. Whether your project is in Ontario or remote corners of the North, we are committing, we are committed to getting the right solution for you. If you are racing against time on an ice road or you need to deliver material by helicopter, we will make sure that the products fit your logistical needs. Like um, yeah, I myself have done many projects where we have cut up the rails so that it could fit in a helicopter. So we would work with you for those uh, uh, logistical problems. Um, and we take great pride in supporting remote communities and challenging installation. And of course, all our products are CSA certified under 20, UL 2703, TIL A40, uh, including a heavy a heavy snow rating of uh, 4.5 kPa, which is ideal for the uh, oh, I mean 5.4 kPa, uh, which is ideal for the uh, Canadian market. So if you see the Canadian flag that I chose for my presentation, it has no border. So th that's also something that I wanted to uh, show at, in this presentation. So next is the test that we do, did for our uh, certifications. So uh, th these pictures are from the uh, CSA's California facility. Uh, these tests are uh, required for the 2703 certification. This is basically the you know, mechanical load testing. So uh, we, we tested our system to withstand a downward force of 5.4 kPa and an uplift force, uh, uplift force of uh, 2.4 kPa. So, and these numbers were chosen based on the capability, like the mechanical capability of the solar modules. Um, so basically uh, uh, at this, like if you, if, if the loads are beyond this, your solar modules will fail. So uh, there is no point of making this, making the racking system, you know, stronger than the solar panels. So that's why we picked these numbers. Um, so, and we, 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 we don't stop here. Uh, uh, before we send uh, anything to a lab for certification, we usually conduct our own internal testing to refine and improve our designs. Uh, for example, uh, like uh, uh, some of you might be familiar with our static ground mount. So we usually get a prototype, uh, we do a prototype run and then uh, we make some improvements and then you know bring it to the market. So that's something that we do before when we are dealing with any product launch. So next, I want to talk to you about the uh, module compatibility. Um, so the largest module that uh, CSA tested uh, on our racking system is uh, uh, 2384 millimeters by 1303 millimeters. And um, we showed our engineering calculations to the certifier and he was okay with using the term uh, this, uh, this dimension or equivalent area in our installation guide. So basically, this means that uh, uh, if if any module with a uh, with an area of 3.1 meter square, and 3.1 meter square is uh, I'm getting that number by when you uh, when you convert these millimeter values into a meter meter values and then multiply the two to get the area. So that that's how I'm getting the mil, uh, meter square value. So that that's the maximum area. So as long as the uh, as your uh, your module that you're using in your project is less than this area value, uh, it's, uh, it should be compatible with our uh, racking system. Um, CSA has also tested our grounding and bonding products for modules, which has a anodizing thickness of 27 microns. So that, that's the maximum anodizing layer uh, we tested our system to basically. So the most modules in the market right now have an anodizing layer of 10 to 15 microns. So the compatibility is uh, should not be an issue. So um, if the if the module that you are using in uh, in your project is not in our approved list of compatible modules, you have to just let us know, uh, and we will check the compatibility. So uh, oftentimes what we will do is ask you to get in touch with your uh, module manufacturer and uh, confirm the uh, you know like the anodizing uh, anodization layer thickness. And once we get a letter from them. Uh, confirming the anodizing thickness, we would send that letter um, to CSA and uh, get that approval for, like we will uh, get the approval for 
using your module with our racking system. So that's how it usually works. Um, in addition to the mechanical uh, load testing that you saw in the previous slide, uh, we uh, like uh, as a part of 2703, like to get that certification, uh, we also have to you know uh, pass uh, the temperature cycling tests and the humidity tests as well. So that that, that comes with the 2703 standard. So uh, next we will talk about the our signature uh, K rack line of products. And uh, we have a few new uh, members of the family. So I will be introducing you to them. So this is the hidden end clamp. So this is a new product. Uh, the, uh, you know, basically uh, this product comes in a kit uh, of eight hidden end clamps and eight end caps and a positioning tool. Um, this cam, uh, this clamp is ideal for customers looking for a slick finish without visible end clamps on the rig. Uh, it ensures a secure connection uh, for your modules. It comes pre-assembled and uses the same half-inch socket as all our KRAC products. So whether uh, your uh, project is in landscape or portrait orientation, this uh, this clamp will work perfectly with the conventional two rail setup at the green clamping zone of the module. Uh, so uh, we are currently offering uh, two color options for the end covers, uh, silver for uh, mill finish rails and black for uh, black anodized rails. So these covers have been rigorously tested for our Canadian winters and summers, ensuring long lasting performance. Uh, so uh, I'm going to turn on the uh, my camera for a, for a, just to show you how to install it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I hope you can see me. So this is our uh, uh, the rapid rail, and this is the end clamp. So you have to slide it in from the end. And this is the module frame. Uh, and you will uh, you will also get a positioning wand, uh, basically, which will uh, push this end clamp towards the towards your uh, module frame. And then you have to tighten it to spec. Then the covers go in. So this is the cover, and it it just snaps on, snaps on. So th this is how it will look like. So um, yeah, so uh, I hope uh, uh, yeah, that's clear now. Um, So let's move on to the next slide. Uh, this is another uh, another uh, new product that we added to the to our K rack line of products, uh, the bulldog mount. We are calling it, and just like its namesake, you know, once it bites, it never lets go. Uh, this mount is tough, reliable, and can go on most almost on any type of roof. To make things easier for you, uh, we have added a true to scale image of the mount right uh, right on the cut sheet. Um, you can cut it out and place it on your roof to see its fit, uh, kind of like trying uh, trying shoes, uh, just but for solar mounts. Uh, as long as the mount sits flush, you are good to go. Uh, now let's talk waterproofing. The bulldog mount keeps uh, keeps water most of the water at bay by because of that cover. So uh, uh, the cover actually keeps most of the water away in the first place. But if any water decides to be get ambitious, uh, and the uh, the butyl layer steps in, the butyl is basically the superhero of sealants. 
uh, it's what the roof uh, itself you relies on. Um, you know, and uh, we have uh, we also have neoprene washers for backup because who doesn't want a, a want a second line of defense? The retaining lip design stops the butyl from escaping. So uh, if you uh, look closely into the mount, uh, this has a retaining lip. So that, that what it does, it it uh, when the mount sits on top of the roof and the butyl gets pushed out uh, away from the fasteners, it stops it. The retaining lip stops that uh, 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 stops the butyl from moving away. So even if the water tries to sneak in, it does not stand a chance. The Bulldog mount lets you orient the solar panels um, in both portrait and landscape. Uh, plus, uh, it's compatible with shared rate. You will need one tool. Um, you will need the same uh, half-inch socket for the entire install. So you can finally leave the extra tool belt at home. So, um, so our Bulldog mount comes with uh, not one, not two, but three different hardware options. Uh, four self-drilling screws for the sheathing mount. So this, uh, the, the, that's the first option here. So that mount can go on, 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 uh, um, onto the sheathing only. Uh, so basically this is a rafterless mount. Uh, the second option that we offer is two self-drilling screws, and they, that has to go into the uh, truss. Uh, the third option that you get is the um, uh, is one self-drilling screw uh, that goes into the truss. So the the next uh, the next uh, next product that we I want to talk to you about is the. Uh, the K Flash. Uh, this is our signature product and a favorite among installers for a good reason. Uh, we have recently upgraded it. Uh, it, it. It can now be a rafterless mount as well, uh, with extra holes to accommodate the sheathing only installation. So, uh, if you see the picture here, uh, this has four uh, screws going into the sheathing. So th th that's the product. Uh, like this, the product, the K Flash here that you are looking at is a rafterless mount as well. So, yeah. So uh, uh, this mount has a water, uh, uh, this mount also uh, is watertight, thanks to the built-in channels for sealant and uh, bubble shape, which uh, diverts water because uh, water can be sneaky. Uh, the uh, the K-Flash base plate can handle up to four self-drilling screws um, and we have eliminated the need of through holes, through holes uh, for the L bracket attachment to avoid any potential water leakage. Um, it's powder coated to blend seamlessly with the asphalt uh, roofs and is made from lightweight malleable aluminum. Um, it's easy to install um, and it practically slides under the shingles just like a credit card under a lock door, but legally. Uh, both landscape and portrait uh, mounting is uh, mounting is possible, and the same half-inch socket works here too. So you will uh, so you, your tool bag basically stays light. So uh, some uh, authorities having jurisdiction in British Columbia requires the mount to have at least two screws secured into the truss, uh, and our first product here. Uh, is uh, is you know tailored for those installers who work who work on those uh, on those regions. Uh, the K flash with the riser is ideal for uh, shared roof. Uh, I mean sh shared drill. So and I will get into that later on. Uh, most installers most installers use the single screw option, which involves one four inch screw going directly into the truss. Uh, lastly, we offer the trustless uh, K-Flash mount, uh, which uses the uh, four uh, self-drilling screws. Uh, the hardware, all the hardware that we supply, um, it comes with pre-installed neoprene washers, ensuring a watertight seal and reliable performance. So the next product that I want to talk to you about is the uh, articulating L. And uh, this is one of the most versatile products that we have. 
Um, it is designed to be mounted on a wide range of uh, roofs. Its key feature is the adjustable integrated L bracket. So it, it, uh, you can uh, move the L bracket in many angles. Thus, you can uh, thus it accommodates for roofs which has which have very uh, like varying slopes. Uh, when installing on a shingle or a flat uh, steel roof, um, the pre-installed butyl tape ensures a watertight seal. Additionally, the retaining lip design, uh, like all, all, all the other KRAC products, keeps the butyl in place, preventing it from shifting away from the faster, uh, like basically the same, basically the same function. So you know, when the when you put the mount on the roof, uh, the butyl tries to move away from the fastener. So basically, that that retaining lip keeps the keeps the butyl within the close to the fasteners and prevents pre try like what it does it prevents leaks for the quonset height uh, quonset hut uh, style roofs the pre-installed closed cell epdm neoprene washer provides a leak proof uh, leak proof uh, mount uh, this mount also comes pre-assembled and can be installed with uh, one fastener saving you valuable installation time uh, it's compatible with a wide range of roofs that work with uh, our hanger bolt, uh, Rhino mount, giraffe, uh, I mean, uh, Rhino mount and the K-flash. So let me just change my slide here. So you know, the first option that you are getting, it, it, it does not have any sealant underneath it because there is no direct contact with the roof. So uh, it can go directly on the hanger bolt or the bulldog mount or the Rhino mount or the K-flash. Um, so yeah <clears throat> and the next option that we have is the uh, uh, you know it's for stepped or multi-plane roofs so th uh, this uh, this bulldog mount will have a butyl seal um, and uh, it's used alongside a four inch custom screw to attach to the mount to the rafter uh, on arched metal roofs or quonset huts the closed cell epdm neoprene foam will again provide necessary seal the Quonset huts are usually uh, this. Uh, th that's the last option that I'm talking about. Uh, the Quonset huts usually have uh, pre-existing bolts on the roof. So what you have to do is uh, is unscrew that bolt and place your mount, and then uh, 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 re-secure the bolt again. Since uh, there is no uh, roof penetrations um, uh, hardware required in this situation, the product comes without any roof attachment of components. So uh, next is the universal L. So the universal L is uh, not a new not a new mount. Uh, this is this has been in existence for a while, uh, but it, it's definitely worth the refresher. So this mount can be uh, has an integrated L foot and a pre-assembled K nut. So not only are you saving time, but you, uh, but there are like you are also uh, don't have any loose hardware to deal with. It comes with a pre-installed butyl tape. Uh, like its cousins, uh, the, uh, the retaining lip designed to prevent the leaks. Uh, both landscape and portrait um, uh, orientation is possible with this mount. The universal L is a multitasker as long as the mount sits flush on the roof. Uh, again, one trusty half inch socket is all you need. Uh, 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 the, the, that will do the trick. So basically, all our to, uh, all our hardware just requires uh, one tool. That is the half-inch socket. So let's move on. The next uh, next uh, mount that I want to talk to you about is the hanger bolt. Uh, so the hanger bolt is another versatile roof mount option that works on both ridge and troughs or uh, or valleys or peaks, whatever you want to call it. Uh, with the uh, with its EPDM sealing washer. It ensures watertight insulation. It's built for maximum, uh, uh, like the maximum roof slope that you can install it is four, uh, four, four by twelve, um, and it has to attach to a truss. Um, uh, the reason uh, you cannot go beyond four by twelve is uh, at that time the uh, the bending moment kicks in and uh, there there can be there could be failures. So that is the maximum slope. Uh, also, just a heads up: when you are installing on the peaks, don't forget to use the anti anti crust spacer. It's like a secret ingredient that uh, uh, makes the uh, makes the uh, mount work smoothly. 
so th that that basically goes uh, where uh, in between the roof like you can see in the picture here so the next uh, mount that i want to talk to you about is a giraffe mount uh, so no uh, it's not tall like its namesake but the shape does resemble a giraffe hence the name the uh, this uh, this mount is designed for trapezoidal steel roofs and has an integrated L with the base plate. So it's all about saving you installation time. Just like all our KRAC products, uh, you will uh, you can install it using the good old half inch socket. That's right, one tool for the whole job. The hardware that connects the uh, mount to the roof also comes in neoprene washers, giving you extra confidence with watertight seal. Um, and in case you are wondering uh, if this is trustless, um, uh, if this is a trustless mount, and I, I have to say it is, and you don't have to, you know, hunt down rafters. Uh, we have included a two-scale picture of the mount uh, on the cut sheet so that you can check its uh, easy integration with your roof before you install it. So next is the uh, Rhino mount. Um, and unlike the giraffe mount, it does not uh, have an integrated L, but don't worry, we can still get uh, creative with it. Uh, what you have to do is just get a L bracket on top of it and voila. Uh, you, you can run the rails both parallelly, uh, uh, like parallel to the eaves and vertically up the roofs. This means uh, you can mount the uh, solar panels in both portrait and landscape orientation, giving you plenty of flexibility. Like the giraffe mount, we have also included a two scale picture of the rhino mount uh, on the cut sheet so that you can uh, you know, cut it out and put it on your roof profile and see if it works or not. And yes, yeah, it uses the same trusty half inch socket. So the next uh, clamp that I want to talk to you about is the standing L clamp. Uh, this one is for those who like to keep things simple, fewer parts, less hassle. So the L is integrated and streamlined into your installation. Um, it's engineered and certified for durability you will get a secure watertight insulation without any penetrations. No holes required on your roof. Uh, now you might notice that the grooves on the, the if you uh, look closely in the picture, there are grooves on the uh, clamping surface here. So uh, here, uh, the science behind this is uh, when, you, when you hit the specified torque from our install guide, the, uh, the pins, push the standing seam into these grooves, creating dimples. And these dimples on the standing seam act as a mechanical interlock, preventing any movement. So yes, this dimple is critical. It's like the secret sauce to making the clamp work like a chip. And, um, and with all our mounts, you can uh, trust the same half inch socket. Um, so yeah, so one tool for everything. So I hope gives uh, the, this uh, till uh, the, the mounts that I've covered uh, till now gives you a clear picture of how our mounts can make your life easier and your install smoother. Uh, we have engineered these products to make the guesswork out of mounting uh, and give you a solution that saves time and keep you dry at the same time. So now I, I will talk to you about the, uh, you know, the accessories that we offer. Uh, the first uh, uh, the, the, the first product that I want to talk to you about is the rodent guard kit. So um, we offer three different uh, products based on the mesh size. Uh, we offer six inch uh, and eight inch and the 48 inches. So unless you are setting up a ground mount, uh, the 48 inches is mostly for those big ground installations. Uh, the cool part uh, is that both the rodent guard clip and the clamp attach securely to your uh, solar module frame return, uh, holding the mesh in place. Uh, these are designed to withstand even sliding snow so that you are uh, uh, like, these are basically designed for our Canadian winters. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, they are very reliable and they are very, uh, they are also reusable. So like all our KRAC products, you can use the same half inch socket for the installation. Um, a bonus point here is like installations with both the rodent clamp and the clip are widely accepted by authorities having jurisdictions 
all across Canada. So not only do you keep the rodents out, but also you sleep knowing it's all up to code. Uh, the next mount that I want to uh, like uh, product that I want to talk to you about is the top micro inverter mount. Uh, we listen to feedback from uh, uh, installers on the side micro inverter mount, and uh, th that's how we came up with this product. So we went back to our uh, drawing board, and voila, uh, we introduced the top micro inverter mount. This basically gives you more clearance. Um, you know, which is required for big uh, you know, micro like micro inverters and whatnot, whatever uh, uh, micro inverters or like whatever accessory you are using for your solar uh, solar modules, inverters or something like that. So uh, it uses the same uh, half inch socket and the K nut that goes on top of the channel uh, top on the top channel of the rapid rail. Um, so yeah, so again uh, one tool actually does all the installation for you. Next, I want to talk to you about the, our cable management options. Um, uh, the big rule of the, the big uh, rule of thumb here is no cables should be touching the roof surface because over time they will wear out. The best way to secure them is with our cable raceways. So we offer 16 inches, 32 inches, and 48 inches. Um, they perfectly fit into the two channels of our rapid rail um, and will last for the life of the asset. So the next thing is like the cable clip ties. So yeah, th this is a more budget, uh, budget friendly option for cable management. So we have uh, cable management type uh, this uh, this uh, this cable clip ties actually latch on to our rapid rail that you can see here in that picture um, uh, and this th this do the trick without breaking the bank uh, now let's talk about uh, shared rail because who doesn't love efficiency right so here uh, i have two systems uh, one one shows the conventional system and the other one is the uh, shared rail system. Uh, in the conventional rail system, you will see two rails per module spaced evenly from the center. Uh, but in shared rail, changes the game uh, because there are fewer rails and uh, fewer mounts while maintaining stability. With shared rail, what happens is the top and the bottom rail of the array stays the same, like which is conventional rail. But in the middle rail, the middle rail, uh, the middle rail is shared basically. So uh, the middle rail shares load from uh, the uh, from um, two modules of uh, of two adjacent rows. Uh, so for, for for example, we did many tests, um, we did many studies to see uh, how much saving we are getting from the, from uh, moving into shared rail. So you know, what we have observed is uh, if you use shared rail. Uh, you get to you, you get uh, your you get you need 30% less rail, 30% uh, fewer roof attachments, and two two or three fewer clamps. Uh, so this is just the, uh, the, this particular uh, particular array that I'm talking to you about. So um, and I won't lie, shared rail is not for first timers. If it's uh, your first rodeo, stick to the basics. So basically, do conventional rail if you don't have much experience. But once you get some experience, you love shared. So uh, here is an interesting study that we did. Um, uh, as the size of uh, our, uh, of, of the, as the size of the array increases, the percentage savings on the rail uh, does grow. Uh, so it, it grows exponentially. Um, and then uh, after 30 rows or so, it plateaus. So uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is like, even if you get 50% uh, uh, less rail at uh, beyond 30, 30 rows, that's also a very big saving. So that's why uh, many installers who are experienced, they like the shared rail. Here are some pro tips uh, uh, on how to do shared rail. 
So yeah, we recommend using the K flash with the riser because uh, you can use the four inch bracket, uh, L bracket, then uh, it can use the bubble part of the K flash. So this, what this does, what this does, it gives you additional flexibility both horizontally and vertically. So th that's what we are aiming for here with the uh, shared. So uh, we have another product that helps with shared drill. It's the shared drill data. So it's like, it's basically a cheat code. Uh, it reduces measurements, uh, lets you put the modules up against it and clip. Uh, so uh, basically this uh, uh, shared drill mount, a data mount, it clips onto the rail as well. So um, you don't even have to remove it uh, when you are done with the install. And the, and the width of this uh, shared drill data is equal to the uh, mid clamp so yeah so that's how it helps next i want to talk to you about rail spans so this is where it gets a little bit more technical so for most of canada 48 inches uh, uh, continuous span will work and a uh, uh, yeah, 18 inch uh, span will work uh, 18 inch cantilever span will work but uh, it is important that you verify this uh, with us or like a local uh, local professional engineer before you do your install. Um, wind and snow loads can vary a lot, so we uh, we do rec uh, we recommend uh, consulting a local professional engineer because they know the local conditions and they are trained in that way. So uh, and we can we can provide uh, a site specific engineering if you require. Uh, we would uh, that would cost you extra though. Uh, one thing to note is at higher environmental loads, uh, like the simply supporting uh, simply supported span and continuous span can be different. So what simply supported uh, span means is uh, in this uh, picture, uh, the, the the mount that we have used is the uh, awning mount, and it has three uh, awning brackets. So basically three mounts. So in this situation. This is a continuous span because there are more than two mounts. So in case there are only two mounts, if you are dealing with only two mounts, that is simply supported span. So what happens is if the uh, snow load, which which get which can which can get uh, very high uh, in Canada, if it's beyond 30, uh, 35 uh, psf, um, it's like 1.6 kPa. So if it goes beyond that, which it does in many cases. So uh, the cantilever, I mean, like the simply supported span will be less than the continuous span. So it will not be 48 inches. So please verify that with a local engineer or you can come to us for recommendations. So uh, um, uh, we have recently started to include the span charts in our installation guide. So you can uh, work out your spans yourself based on the local wind and snow load. And if your PNG needs to double check your calculations, they can use these charts and uh, uh, make uh, recommendations according to that. Because uh, like your PNG will love these charts because they follow the National Building Code of Canada. And, uh, uh, and the thing is, um, National Building Code of Canada tends to be more conservative uh, if we compare it to um, ASC 710 or ASC 716. So these are the standards that are followed in America. Uh, so yeah, and uh, yeah, and the, the the conservative nature of NBC that stems from our environmental conditions. So like basically weather. So uh, uh, I don't know if anybody knows. Today it uh, snowed in Bow Valley, and in Texas it's 30 degrees. So that's the uh, that's the problem that we have. You have to deal with, right? So the engineering uh, span, the span that basically works in, in the US might not work here. So yeah, so basically you, you have to get it uh, certified. Uh, like if you're uh, like, the, our charts are much more easier to navigate for uh, professional engineers uh, that you might hire for your project. So that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, one last note, don't forget that uh, yeah, like uh, we have five different charts and uh, you have to pick the most conservative span from those five charts. Um, we are also working on updating these charts for seismic loads. 
uh, especially for British Columbia, yeah, but don't worry. Uh, the environmental loads are uh, very, uh, uh, not, they are not much when you compare them with uh, uh, the wind load and snow load. So uh, they, uh, the environmental loads will prevail over seismic loads. So uh, the, most likely the charts will stay the same. That's what I'm trying to say. So yeah, yeah. So this uh, the span calculation uh, topic can be very technical. So if uh, th this has to be a separate session for span calculation, so I don't want to dive into very deep into this. So next is our configurator. So um, uh, so we have uh, come up with this tool that basically. Uh, if you put in all your uh, project information, it calculates a bill of material for you. So what I will do, I will put my information here and I will do try to show you some scenarios here. Uh, I, I am, uh, can somebody confirm if, uh, if they can see the configurator screen? Yes, we can see it, Sudip too. Okay, so let me do a test, test one. So and let's pick Canada. And I, I always like to keep the you know, project name to be as unique as possible, so that if you are uh, producing multiple uh, bill of materials for the same uh, project, you can do that too. So, so you have to just name it differently so that uh, you can differentiate yourself. Uh, yeah, so that's the idea. But you will you will also get a unique uh, unique uh, number you know, attached to your bill of material every time you uh, you know generate something new. Yeah, so this is like the disclaimer. Then you pick your province. So uh, uh, if you see here, it populates the wind and snow load, uh, and it, this uh, this wind and snow load is based on the. the National Building Code of Canada, and we have a database that uh, that where this uh, configurator pulls out information from. And uh, in case you are uh, you, where you live is very remote and you uh, you don't have access to the wind and snow load, and you have to hire a then you have to hire a local PH to to figure this these numbers out. And uh, what the good thing about this configurator is is you can these fields are actually editable. So you can put those numbers in that that you get from your professional engineer and put those in and then uh, design it accordingly. So let's pick terrain and importance factor. These these definitions come from the National Building Code again. And if you uh, click on the information button, it uh, gives you a small definition. So let's just move on. So next you have to select a module. I'm, uh, I'm making one array for now, but the thing is you can do multiple arrays and you can orient them as uh, the way you want them to be. So, and you can take modules off whatever you want. So uh, next you have to pick uh, what uh, mounting uh, options that you want. So for now, let me select the K-Flash with two mounting, uh, two uh, screws in the L bracket. Rodent protection. Here it gives you the two options that we talked about. And there you have your bill of materials. And uh, the other thing about this is like you can add or remove, uh, mostly add because we re uh, remove the minimum. So there is a minimum quantity. And uh, if you want to remove it, you have to talk to PAY about it. So, but you can add 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 uh, extra parts if you want. And uh, this will show up as spare parts in your bill of materials as well. So basically you have to sign in and everything. I'm not going to go through that. So yeah, so that, that's the that's the that, that's the bill of materials, and that's how you use the configurator basically. So yeah, 
uh, that's the end of my presentation. Great, thank you, Sudipto. We do have a couple of questions. Um, the standing seam roof mount can be used as the L bracket, or do we need to add the L bracket separately? It is one in the same, so something yeah. for folks to be aware of. It's a very cost-effective solution. Um, just let me read this one. Is Kinetic working on a new rodent guard clamp where the regular KGRGC clamp can't be used because of no lip on the panel flame uh, frame to clip onto it. Yes, you folks are yes. working on a universal clamp. So, yes. do you have a time frame for that, roughly? Uh, no, uh, I have to. I have to get back to you on that. Uh, Archie is working on it, and hopefully, we'll have something soon. Okay, I've, I've seen demos of it, so I know. I know it's coming. Uh, yeah. What's the yeah. minimum sheathing thickness for the bulldog? Uh, 716th OSB. Great. 716th, yeah. Okay, and are there any more questions out there? It's a great time while we have Kinetic on the line here. I don't see any, but we've got a really knowledgeable staff when it comes to Kinetic. We've been dealing with them for a decade now. Uh, also, our friends at Kinetic have great uh, resources as well. They know the product pretty darn well. Couple of things before we go. This was recorded, so it will be on the YouTube channel. It will come out in the newsletter. Um, this is stocked across Canada, so we've got it in our five warehouses across Canada. And just uh, thank you, everybody, and thank you, Kinetic. Uh, really appreciate the partnership and taking the time to to help us all learn a little more about the product today. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Sudipti. Take care, everyone. You too.